This video will talk about the Pythagorean theorem and its converse. It's one of the more well-known theorems in mathematics, uh, but there are a few little things that are normally overlooked that we're going to look at in this video. So before we talk about the Pythagorean theorem, we got to talk about what the Pythagorean theorem applies to. The Pythagorean theorem applies to right triangles, which right triangles have a 90 degree angle. Um, this will apply to any right triangle, and we'll just have to label some sides here. Let's call these two we'll call legs. They'd be the two short sides of the right triangle, the part that make the 90 degree angle, and then the big side is what they call the hypotenuse. Um, normally they would denote these with letters. They normally call them A and B for your legs, and that would just be the lengths of the sides there and then C will be the length of the hypotenuse. And if you look at the Pythagorean theorem, what it's going to tell you is that if you have a right triangle, then A squared, which would be represented by this space here, plus B squared, which is represented by this square here, is going to be equal to C squared, which is going to be this right here. This formula is generally what people remember about the Pythagorean Theorem. There is a little more to it, but this is generally what people remember. This is the part that's the most useful in mathematics. So now that we've got an idea of what the theorem does, let's talk about what it actually is saying. So let's start with the Pythagorean Theorem here, which I've denoted with PT, the if part of the theorem. So we always have an if, and then it will imply a then, a, a conditional statement. If I have this, then I have this. In the case of the Pythagorean Theorem, if I have a right triangle with legs A and B and hypotenuse C, then A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That's the part of the theorem that people usually remember, it's just the formula. But in order to use this, I have to have all of these things as well. I have to have a right triangle, I have to have legs A and B, and I have to have a hypotenuse C. This is generally a part that gets overlooked. It normally doesn't play too much effect until you start looking at the converse of the Pythagorean Theorem, which we're going to look at now. So let's look at the converse of the Pythagorean Theorem. Basically what it's going to do is it's going to flip our ifs and thens. So if I have a triangle with a squared plus B squared equal to C squared, where A and B are the legs, or I should say shorter sides, and C is the long side, then, if this holds true, this formula here, then I can assume that, or I can't assume, but I can deduce that this is a right triangle. Now this doesn't seem all that useful at first, but in construction it's very useful if you have a corner and you want to check and see if it's right. What you can do is you can measure out, say here's your corner, you can measure out a certain distance here, let's say 4, and then 3 along the wall, and then if you measure this distance here and you apply the Pythagorean Theorem and see if this holds up, then you know that that corner is square. That's just one example of where it is used. Uh, there are several others, but that's the big one. Now that we've discussed the theorem, let's talk about a couple of examples. So if we look at a right triangle here, where I have an unknown side, x. All right, but I do know the hypotenuse, and I know one of the other legs. Okay, I can apply the theorem here. I know one leg, let's call it 4. So I take 4 and I square it and I add it to the other leg, x squared, or x is the leg, x squared would be the part of the formula that I use, and I know that has to be equal to my hypotenuse squared, which is 5 squared. If I simplify both sides a little bit, I get 16 plus x squared has to equal 25. At this point I can subtract 16 from both sides, so x squared has to equal 9, square root both sides, meaning that x has to equal 3. So x is 3, 
that's one example of how I can use Pythagorean theorem to solve for one of the sides. As long as I have two sides, I can solve for the third. All right, let's uh, take an example of how to use the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. Let's say I'm given a triangle with sides 6, 7, and 12, and I want to know if this makes a right triangle. Well, I can take these sides and plug them into the Pythagorean theorem. Right here I have my legs, so I would take 6 squared plus 7 squared, and I would set that equal to my hypotenuse squared. So I take 12 squared. Okay. If this is true, if it is equal, then it's a right triangle. If it's not, then it's not a right triangle. Simple as that. If I take 6 squared, I get 36 plus 49. That's going to equal 144. Well, we can tell right here, right now, this isn't going to work. These two numbers are way too small to be equal to 144 when I add them together. So this is not a right triangle. Okay, there's a couple of examples of how the Pythagorean theorem and its converse are used. Hopefully this video helps.